This video is sponsored by NordVPN, a service that I use and highly recommend. Check out the link in the description for more and enjoy the video. Hey everybody. So the stick figure is a universally recognizable symbol, in all likelihood one of the most well known in the world. There are very few people currently living who can claim not to have drawn one at some point in their lives. The stick figure transcends language, location, demographics, and can trace its roots back nearly 30,000 years. Its simplicity and versatility allows the stick figure to serve nearly any purpose required of it. Infographics, comics, animations, games, and visual media of all kinds all employ the humble stick figure in an unmatched variety of ways. But with the advent of the World Wide Web, something changed. Over the course of two decades, the stick figure came to represent much more. Freedom of artistic expression, an entire genre of interactive entertainment, and the boundless possibilities of a brand new virtual frontier. As strange as it might sound, the internet, with its vibrant and chaotic culture, wouldn't be exactly the same without the mark this simple pictograph has left on it. Let's take a look into one of the World Wide Web's oldest and most unusual fascinations. Let's take a look into the history of the stick figure. Now, as most of you probably know, the stick figure itself has been around quite a lot longer than the internet. How long, exactly? Well... Thirty thousand BC. The dawn of humanity has only just begun to shine down upon the untarnished surface of the ancient earth. Human beings have yet to form the barest essentials of society or civilization, and these advancements were still many millennia down the line. But the human desire to express, to tell stories, to create, was as strong in these ancient days as it is now. Some of the most revealing and informative markers of early human life are cave paintings and petroglyphs, ancient depictions covering a variety of subjects left behind on stone walls. People, animals, and depictions of daily life can be found displayed across the walls of numerous habitation sites all around the planet. And it is with these early expressions of human creativity that our story begins. The stick figure is quite possibly the simplest depiction of a human being that can still be identified as such. And as a result, these early cave painters more often than not use them to represent individuals. We can see this in effect even to this day. The stick figure is simple and straightforward enough that anyone can draw one, even if they happen to be using ochre paints on a cave wall. Throughout history, this design, effective as it was, remained relatively unchanged. For thousands of years we see what is essentially the same stick figures used and reused in a variety of circumstances. But eventually, change would come, and it would be brought on by a man named Otto Neurath. In the early 1920s, Neurath, an Austrian sociologist, developed an interest in the concept of universal language. He quickly established the idea that while words and phrases could always be misunderstood, pictures had a certain unifying quality that made them a perfect fit for his project. In 1925, Neurath began work on what would become the International System of Typographic Picture Education, or ISOTYPE, a system of conveying warnings, statistics, and information through straightforward and easily understandable depictions. Neurath made significant use of the versatile stick figure design to represent individuals and statistics in a variety of ways, and it would be the first time the stick figure was put to work, so to speak. In 1934, graphic designer Rudolf Modley founded Pictorial Statistics Incorporated, bringing this standardized system to the United States for the first time. In 1972, Otto Aker designed depictions for the Munich Summer Olympics, drawing heavy influence from the isotype system, and between 1974 and 1979, the American Institute of Graphic Arts designed and rolled out the standard Department of Transportation pictograph signs, which we can still see in use to this day. This ancient representation had been given a new purpose and even greater worldwide notoriety. But around the time the DOT signage was concluding its development, a new chapter of the Stickman story was about to begin.
On April 30th, 1978, a man named Thomas Fulp is born in Perkasie, Pennsylvania. Throughout the late 80s and early 90s, Tom developed an avid interest in animation, music, and video games. In 1990, Tom got his hands on an Amiga personal computer and began to produce 2D animations for fun. Soon, his interest expanded to include simple game design via HTML. Tom also developed a passion for the Neo Geo series of gaming consoles, and was at the time running an online club centered around the Neo Geo using the Prodigy web service. In 1991, Tom launched a fanzine for members of the club, which he would continue to produce throughout his time in 7th and 8th grade. The name of this fanzine was New Ground, a synonym for Neo Geo, and the name seemed to stick. Tom Fulb didn't know it at the time, but he had just set into motion a movement that would change the face of the internet. A year goes by and it's now 1992. In California, on the complete opposite side of the country, computer programmer Jonathan Gay and software entrepreneur Charlie Jackson had just sold their Macintosh-centric software development company, Silicon Beach, to the Aldus Corporation. Although the sale had been a successful one, Jonathan wasn't satisfied. He wanted to start a company, if for no other reason than to, in his own words, make something. On January 22nd of 1993, Gay was joined by his friend and recent business partner Jackson to start a new software company, simply entitled FutureWave. The two decided to begin work on a vector-based drawing program called SmartSketch to be used in conjunction with digital tablets. The program was ultimately a commercial failure, but through their struggles, Gay and Jackson happened upon a new idea, circa 1995, that they believe would prove a much greater success a web-based drawing and animation program that they titled Future Splash Animator. Around the same time, Tom Fulp would launch a small website to host some of his game projects, now under the name New Ground Remix. A year later, in 1996, the early entertainment sites StickDeath.com and Stick Figure Death Theater would be launched by Rob Lewis and Matt Calvert, respectively, and all the while, Future Splash Animator was continuing to pick up steam. But it wouldn't be until 1997 that these disparate endeavors would begin to come together. In January of 1997, Four years after the founding of FutureWave Software, the company was acquired by software giant Macromedia, with the primary goal being the acquisition of Future Splash Animator. As predicted, Future Splash's versatility and compact design had made it ideal for web media playback and production, and Macromedia was eager to capitalize on the increasingly popular software. Macromedia rebranded Future Splash and packaged it as a combination authoring and player software. Future Splash was no more. It was now Macromedia, Flash. With a few modifications for Macromedia, Flash proved an even bigger success than Future Splash, quickly becoming the universal standard for web animation production and playback, and it would only continue to grow from there. And it was around this time that Tom Fulp noticed this strange little piece of software and decided to try it out for the first time. Tom took to Flash exceedingly well, producing his first game with the software, the much beloved Teletubby Funland, in 1998. Flash was the creative tool I had always been dreaming of, Tom later remarked, noting that it was a perfect marriage of his passions for animation and game design, the likes of which he had never seen. At the time, Flash itself didn't actually have a coding system of any kind, but developers like Tom were able to make it work, and Tom's legendary 1999 point-and-click Flash game, Pico's School, seemed to prove this point. Tom Fulp's Flash games were like nothing web users had ever seen before, and as a result, Newground Remix soon became a hub of online activity. Starting in 2000, Tom converted his old NGR site into Newgrounds.com and introduced a portal system through which users could submit Flash animations and games of their own. Newgrounds would not be the only one, as game and animation aggregator sites like Addicting Games began to pop up circa 2000, beginning what would become the first golden age of Flash. By this point, the previously mentioned StickDeath.com and Stick Figure Death Theater had been around for a few years, so it wasn't as if the idea of using stick figures for entertainment was exactly a new concept. But the content posted on these two sites, and other smaller ones like them, was primitive, unrefined, and most notably, unfocused. 
Gratuitous violence seemed to be a prevailing theme, as was common on the early internet, but beyond this there was little to tie together the early stick figure scene between its varying hiding places across the web. The stage, as it was, was set. The powder was primed, and all we needed was a spark. Chinese animator Zhu Qiqiang, born 1976, had been creating simple stick figure animations since he was a student in the late 80s, more as a hobby than an actual venture. Throughout the 90s, he saw little return from stick figure animation and flew almost entirely under the radar. Then, on April 19th of 2001, Qiqiang would upload a single video to the newly formed Newgrounds animation portal. This video was Zhao Zhao. Literally translated as small small, more accurately translated as a simple diminutive, Zhao Zhao was a 75 second long animation featuring something that may seem familiar to us all. In low resolution and with bit crushed audio samples, two simple black stick figures fight with their fists and various weapons over a white background. Inspired by over the top Hong Kong style martial arts films, Xi Xiang added flips, flying kicks, and all manner of exaggerated attacks and defenses as the two figures clash against each other. They later add staffs, bows, rocket launchers, and duplication abilities to the mix, ramping up the battle to a final bloody conclusion. It's a formula that's fairly standard for the stick fight animations of today, except this was 2001. Something like this simply had not been done before. In 1 minute and 15 seconds, Zhu Xisheng had defined an entire genre. Over the coming years, Zhao Zhao would become exceedingly popular, to the point that future stick fight animations and games would often brand themselves as Zhao Zhao style productions. Xi Xiang would produce eight more episodes of the Zhao Zhao series, branching out from simple 2D animation into interactive games, 3D experiences, and sponsored ads for various products. But most importantly, Zhao Zhao had set a standard. Virtually every stick figure animation from that point onwards would have Zhao Zhao as its distant ancestor, and with that, the disparate collection of stick animation hubs scattered across the web now had a defined rallying point. And so, it began. On July 7th of 2001, a man named Jason Whittem created Operation Chopstick, a Zhao Zhao-esque fight sequence starring a character named Crazy J, an online pseudo-persona for Whittem. Later that year, Whittem would create the site StickPage, acting as the first major hub for this new and vibrant style of stick figure animation. On July 13th, 2003, Newgrounds user IGS Dan created the game A True Stick Death, a point-and-click murder simulator, for lack of a better term, remixing the semi-popular genre with the rapidly spreading stick figure style. The next year, a user going by the name Quirkwer1234 would create the now legendary Muda.SWF, a comedic series of fight sequences inspired by JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which ironically ended up being a number of individuals' first introduction to the series. Time went on, and both the pieces of media themselves and the infrastructure to support them grew steadily more complex. A number of these early animations and games were made with the still fairly new Flash, and the growth of the community creating them mirrored the growth of the software. December 7, 2003 saw the creation of Kabe Kudaki, or Wall Breaker, by an unknown user, in which a figure uses all manner of elaborate and insane methods and tools to break down a wall. This would soon become a sort of subgenre within the stick animation community. In March of 2004, Armor Games, another major player in the growing pantheon of Flash sites, went online for the first time. The original Storm the House survival game was posted to Addicting Games by user Ivory Drive on June 2nd, 2005, and slowly but surely, Flash games and animations began to enter their first true golden age. And just in time, because a number of major upheavals were just around the corner.
As it would turn out, although Macromedia was indeed not the first owner of the Flash software package, they would not be the last either. On December 3rd, 2005, Adobe Systems acquired the entirety of Macromedia, again rebranding Macromedia's now ubiquitous media software. Almost a decade earlier, Adobe had turned down an offer to buy Future Splash in favor of their own Acrobat system in the summer of 96. Now the tables had clearly turned, and the corporation was buying Flash's new owner for a staggering $3.6 billion. And with this, the program entered its final and most recognizable age of development. This was the dawn of Adobe Flash. Adobe would spearhead Flash for the next decade and a half, and it would be during this period that Flash would facilitate some of the most recognizable stick figure animations and games of all time. But let's take a step back, because another competitor, designed and geared specifically towards stick animation, had appeared on the scene just a few months earlier. On June 13th of 2005, developer Peter Bone released an animation program he called Pivot Stick Figure Animator, version 1.0. Unlike Flash, which was a generalized animation environment, Pivot was a specialized piece of software designed specifically for stick figure animation, something that hadn't been attempted up until that point. Pivot had a basic infrastructure that allowed virtually anyone to make stick figure animations, regardless of their animation skill. This brought the ability to create and distribute quality stick animations to a much greater audience than before, and alongside Flash, Pivot soon became another workhorse for the countless internet users now caught up in the trend. January of the next year saw the creation of the long-running stick figure webcomic XKCD by Randall Monroe, and a few months later on June 3rd, the first installment of the Animator vs. Animation series by stick animation virtuoso Alan Becker went up on Newgrounds. This series would continue for over a decade and would eventually become what some consider to be the greatest stick figure animation project of all time. July 4th of 2006 saw Independence Day overshadowed by the YouTube release of The Cliff by user Zeph Patterson, in which numerous stick figures attempt to cross a gap only to fail miserably. August 26th was the Newgrounds release date for WPN Fire a stick figure action platformer by Tekken, Sniper Z, and Stone, whose tight gameplay made it a fan favorite. On October 10th, another content platform, Congregate, was launched to host even more content, such as the January 30th, 2007 fighter Electric Man 2 by DX Interactive. There is no Electric Man 1 to be found online, trust me, I've checked. In March of that year, Alan Becker would release the next Animator vs. Animation episode, drastically ramping up his production value, and to round out the year, the precursor site StickDeath.com was taken down for an unknown reason sometime before December. By this point, the standard of quality for what constituted a good stick figure game or animation was significantly higher than it had been just half a decade prior. Pioneering pieces of media like Xiao Xiao and True Stick Death looked downright primitive in comparison to the work that was being done now, brought on in part by a wave of extremely high quality productions throughout the late 2000s. 2007 saw the beginning of Turquoise's infamous Shock series, a high-octane fight extravaganza featuring insane feats of combat and witty lol-speak one-liners that made it an instant classic, and also introduced the People's Elbow, but I won't talk about that right now. On August 27, 2008, up-and-coming indie studio Puffballs United released Breaking the Bank, the first in the choose-your-own-adventure-style Henry Stickman series of games. December 24th was the release date for Flipnote, a software that, while not as popular as Pivot or Flash, would still serve a role in the production of stick figure media the world over. In June of 2009, the original creator of Operation Chopstick and founder of StickPage, Jason Whittem, unveiled a large-scale combat simulator in the stick figure style titled Stick War. The same month saw the release of the not quite as impressive but still influential Blue vs. Green series by the Assassin 650 on YouTube. Around this time, the community began to diversify the content seen in their animations and games. While exaggerated fast-paced combat was once the gold standard, now story-driven adventures, and somewhat more frequently, comedy sketches, would become a facet of the stick figure movement. The Henry Stickman series continued to evolve, and the rough but staggeringly popular Stick Figures on Crack series by Pivot Master DX began production on September 12, 2009. In 2011, Animator v Animation 3 was unveiled, continuing Becker's fantastical saga, and a year or two later, StickDeath.com was brought back online as Stick Death Reborn. AVA 4 went up the next year, Stick Death went down again for some reason, and the genre continued, in its own strange way, to evolve. 
But even as animators and game designers continued to pursue their passions, an unnervingly final declaration was made that may have just spelled the end for the stick figure movement. In July of 2017, Adobe Systems, which had continued to support and develop both Flash Animator and Flash Player for the past 12 years, announced that they would officially end support for the program in January of the year 2021. This was a shockingly concrete decision, as it would entail not only the end of development on the software, but also the official end for sites that still supported Flash, and the deactivation of virtually every instance of Flash Player via a built-in kill switch of sorts. A number of safety issues and more versatile alternatives like HTML5 had made Flash a thing of the past, running on infrastructure that was, in essence, nearly two decades old at that point. But for longtime Flash advocates and fans, the ultimatum was clear. If nothing was done to circumvent this event, games, animations, and all manner of media would be lost forever, and a cultural movement would be stopped dead. While this threat loomed in front of the entire Flash community, the stick figure subgenre faced it equally. Something would have to be done. Of course, it wasn't entirely final. Games and animations that didn't involve Flash would be unaffected, as proven by the popular Unity-based combat platformer Stick Fight by Landfall, inspired by the vibrant stick animations of years gone by. But this was by no means a concrete solution, as there was still the matter of the two decades of history that would be all but erased in four short years. But, when all seemed darkest, a small startup project would help to turn the tide on the oncoming end of an era. In January of 2018, a small YouTuber named Ben Lattimore, going by the online handle Blue Maxima, started up a community project called Flashpoint. The aim of the project was straightforward, to document, categorize, and most importantly, preserve two decades of Flash history, culture, and community. Blue Maxima's Flashpoint would serve as a massive archive, a library of the most influential and renowned Flash animations and games of all time, for any internet user to view and experience for themselves even after the death of the program that once supported them. Naturally included in this would be the countless stick figure animations and games, present since the birth of Flash and continuing until its death. Flashpoint would start slowly, but once word began to spread about the Noble Initiative, the development team began to grow and the library began to expand exponentially. Zhao Zhao, Shock, WPN Fire, Storm the House, and all manner of stick figure games and animations were saved and archived over the coming months and years. Although it may not have seemed important to an outside observer, to those who had seen the evolution and development of stick figure and flash media throughout their formative years, a project like this could not have come soon enough. In the coming years, we would see the release of some of the greatest and most polished stick figure animations and games of all time, despite the threat looming over the horizon. Combat Gods on June 5th of 2019, the extensive Henry Stickman finale completing the mission on August 7th of 2020, and the half hour long Animator v Animation 5 on December 5th of that same year. And then, just one month later, the time would finally come. On January 12th of 2021, all instances of Flash players ceased operation. All Flash media refused to play, and with that, Adobe Flash was officially dead. But fortunately for us, the Flash community and its ever-present stick animation subgenre was not. Through the efforts of a dedicated team, Flashpoint was able to archive and save over 90,000 games and 10,000 animations, 100,000 individual pieces of culture that would have otherwise vanished from everywhere but our own memories. In conjunction with this, sites like Newgrounds and Congregate developed their own workarounds for playing Flash content after the end of life date, and creators from this point onward simply found alternatives for the now defunct software. Pivot and other systems, along with Flash's official successor, Adobe Animator, proved just as effective in the creation of games and animations as Flash had once been. And with this, the stick figure movement continued on, carrying with it over 20 years of history and spirit. 
the legacy of countless animators, game designers, writers, artists, and creators of all kinds. The legacy of an art form and style that's existed almost since the dawn of humanity itself. The legacy of the stick figure. Thanks for watching.